It's alive! Betty White is out of the garage and off the hoist for the first time in months. What a sight for sore eyes, man. Holy crap. Still need to do a lot of work on the tune, but it's out here. I need to uh, turn it around so I can back it in there, but I gotta move some stuff out of the way first. Getting closer and closer to time to take it out testing. I can't wait, dude. I hope the videos do it justice because it sounds pretty good. But we're taking a little bit of a break from the Firebird. Uh, I think we're going to start putting the new fuel tank in the RX-7, which is why I wanted to move this thing off the hoist because it'll make that that much easier. We need to find a good spot for you to lay down in here, bud. This guy just hates anybody pulling in the driveway and just had the uh, fuel cell for the RX-7 dropped off, which is sweet. Uh, that fuel cell, or that fuel tank rather, uh, is for a Fox Body Mustang. David gave it to me because he was like, I have no use for it. And I was like, yeah, I can take it because I got that Fox Body out back. I'll just weld the sump to it. And I was debating on trying to... We spend all day together. What are you sniffing me for? I was debating on trying to make that work in the RX-7 because it's pretty similar, but it's a little wider, but I think there's the room. But now that this showed up, because this wasn't even supposed to ship out for another... Today is the fifth for another two weeks. So that's sweet. Well, yeah, we gotta find a spot for you to lay in here, buddy, don't we? Yeah, we gotta find a spot for you. You wanna sleep in Brandon's Camaro? You wanna sleep in the Camaro? The problem is he's so skittish that like anytime I start hammering something, he gets real nervous. Come on, Max. There. You wanna lay in there? Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. I guess let's open the fuel cell because I'm I'm curious. I'd be so surprised if he actually stayed in there. So as you can tell, this is a Rhodes race cars fuel cell. This is by far the most money I've ever spent on a fuel cell in an effort to not cut up the floor. Oh, the fucking peanuts, man. Golly. Ah, I would rather you guys have stuffed this box full of like old appreciated Playboys from the 80s or something. These peanuts are the worst. Ah, maybe I can get it out of here without losing too much. Anyway, yeah, the, uh, the whole point of spending the money on this was I did not, absolutely not want to cut up the floor in the car. There's no way around it. It's shit. So, when I measured the stock tank that's in there, first of all, why didn't I buy a replacement stock tank? Uh, like, nobody makes them. There's, I found two. One was like 550 bucks, the other was 630 and then there's a place in Australia that uh, makes fabricated ones that are a direct bolt-in but those are two thousand dollars which is insane I was really considering just taking the tank to get it dipped and sealed and everything but I mean I don't know I just didn't want to risk having more problems I just didn't want to risk having more problems down the road, so I figured let's just spend the money and cry once. And another thing, like I've got the fuel cell way up there. Uh, that's a 12 gallon fuel cell. This is a 17 gallon fuel cell. And uh, this is, let's see, uh, seven tall, 31 by 17. And like I was trying to say earlier before I interrupted myself, uh, when I measured the stock fuel tank in the car, it was like 18, I think, by 34 by 7 at the narrower part. And then it goes up like this to, you know, whatever. So I got these, well, not these, I got this and... In a box behind the ladder, I've got the actual straps for it, so it shouldn't be super complicated. And it's already sumped, so 
that's nice. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is weld something to this side over here so I can keep using the stock fill neck. So this I'll probably never touch. Uh, and then this will uh, just hook up. All right, Firebird's out, RX-7 is in. We're gonna get started on swapping this tank over. Just need to uh, pop her in neutral and get it up on the hoist. So hopefully this doesn't take a bunch of fabrication. I know it's going to need a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna leave it right there because there's a few gallons in the tank, hopefully not much, that I need to uh, drain out of it. All right, got that done, didn't spill a drop. Now I need to unscrew the filler neck because I want to retain this. I don't wanna have to pop open the hatch every time I go to a gas station and fill it up through the trunk floor because it's just a whole lot cooler having a stock fill neck. Plus it helps keep like gas fumes out of the car. And this whole thing will just push down. Perfect. All right, so really the only thing left is these two 15 millimeter bolts. And then, yeah, because I never plugged the fuel gauge back in because it stopped working anyway. I'm assuming it's an issue with the sending unit in this. Hopefully, because it used to work in the car. You're a sneaky one, Mr. Tank. You are a sneaky one. I'll give you that. Little bastard. <laughs> Goddamn lake ethanol in here. I'm hoping that this trunk floor is pretty close to even with uh, this frame rail. And I can possibly just, well, you know, actually, I might be able to just do one strap over here, one strap over there, and that's enough. Cause that's fairly far apart we'll have to uh I wonder if I could just get away with using these stock straps that'd be pretty neat I don't know let's get the cell over here and test fit it real quick All right, so the cell is up in there. I, it does look like I'm gonna be able to use these stock straps. They'll hold it pretty well. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of slack here, but I don't really think that's anything to be concerned about. Here's the aluminum tube that I ordered for the fill neck. I got it marked off where I'm going to drill through and weld that to. I'm glad that I got this as long as it is, because it almost doesn't fit. Everything else looks like it'll work pretty well. I have to remake the um, feed line so that it can reach over here because before I think this was all like, I don't know, it, it was able to reach before. It would probably reach if I left the pre-filter on. Here you can see, maybe, all the junk that was in the pre-filter coming out of the tank. Um, but the tank is hitting on part of the floor. So I might dent that uh, 
spare tire hump up a little bit and give this a little bit more room just so it's a little level. Then we'll drop the tank, take it over there, drill a hole in it and start welding the filler neck on it. All right, got the cell out. You can see where it's marked up. I need to uh, blow it out because when I hook the fuel lines up for checking to make sure that all the lengths were right, a little bit of fuel back fed into here. It's all empty now, but just, you know, the fumes are the parts that uh, sucks. Um, and then I've got spots marked on the floor where I need to hammer it up a little bit for some clearance so that the tank can sit even. Right here is where the bolts for the uh, like fuel cap rest and then right there right here is where I need to smack it up for that vent. So the next step now is to put a pilot drill bit in here so I can get a good hole right there and then I'll have to file it a little bit so that I can fit this right around there this doesn't need to go in very far it actually needs to stay out a little ways it could be like this but I think having it on a little bit of an up angle will probably be the best and then uh, hope that there's no fumes in there that <laughs> make this thing explode Got the fill neck welded on. Started off pretty good, and then dipped it over here and said fuck it, because <laughs> I've got this real bad habit of not cleaning the tungsten and shit like that when I dip it. It's one thing I like about MIG welding, you can just power through stuff. TIG welding is so finicky sometimes that it's just, it's real. I gotta get in that doctorly mindset sometimes. So the fuel cell is ready to go in. I got the floor dented up in the two spots that hopefully it needed so it can be level. All right, just got the cell in. It actually fits really well. It doesn't wiggle anywhere. It's tight against the floor. The stock straps 
actually are gonna do dang near perfect. So all I gotta do now is just hook up the uh, fill tube and the lines, and we're good. All right, so now that the car's not blocked in anymore, we can take it out for some testing. Got to put some fuel in it, make sure there's no leaks. Everything else should be good. Oh yeah, that's some streetcar shit right there. And then I just have to um, steal the fuel pressure sensor back off the Firebird because it, it was originally on this car and then this is the one that was on the Firebird that wasn't reading right so I put it in here to plug it. So we'll steal that back off here so that we can read the data. Data. And if it seems like the car's fixed, we might actually go out and make a, a couple test hits in it, see what it's gonna do. Cause I've never really gotten on the car. I've rolled into it a couple times when I had cleaned the filters out, but uh, we don't know really what it's gonna do. So I don't know if it's gonna go left. I don't know if it's gonna go right. I don't know if it'll struggle to do a burnout, anything like that. So I'd like to do some testing tonight. Fueling it up. Everything seems good so far. So, I think we got a success there. And I just want to hear the fuel pump. Yeah, it sounds a lot better. It sounds way happier. Still no leaks anywhere, so cool, cool. So I think I'm gonna finish up with the fuel and then probably grab the GoPro and take it out for a quick little drive.
thing's fast. This thing is fast, man. All right, man, the car actually did super good. I'm very happy with how that turned out. The car, it definitely seems to be fixed. It was running real good. Uh, I didn't notice it going lean. I've got this real bad habit, because it's a power glide, of short shifting it. Because first gear just runs out so long. Uh, I think I shifted it at about 6,000, maybe like 5,900. I think in a little bit here, I'm going to take the car out and do a couple more like actual test hits, like legit test hits. Um, but you'll have to wait for the next video to see that. So we're going to end it off here on quite the high note. Nothing's broken yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time.